Hello everybody, I'm Sonic here once again, and, and of course we are back for the likes of Sonic's Game Gear Marathon from the Maxi Toys Department. So, yeah, I think last time, since yesterday, that I'm presuming that Mario has now finished his um, playthrough of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Game Gear. And even though so far for the results on that particular playthrough, he has been done rather well, even though he totally knows where the Chaos Emerald locations are, and even though for the most part he did that a pretty decent job at it. Even though despite there's some couple of death situations, most notably in Sky Base Zone, Act 2 most likely, and even the likes of the Jungle Zone entirely, which even then though, that's only because of the screen crunch and all that stuff. So even then though, that um, overall, he did that a pretty good job there, even though that he got himself a good ending, which I think is actually a pretty pleasant surprise. But even then though, one thing I actually point things out though, is that if you ever play the Sonic Gems collection, if you actually manage to purchase some of these, um, if you manage to unlock these specific other side of things on the new Museum. You can also play the um, the brief quick play on Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Gear on the final boss in the game really really quickly. But even though I know it took about like five minutes in order to actually just to play that on the Sonic Gems Collection Museum mode. See even then though, speaking of such though, that today I decided to tackle through the next Game Gear Sonic game I was going to be tackling through, and possibly it's definitely a, a, it's probably the definition of the hardest Game Gear Sonic games I'm going to tackle through today. Now to form of Sonic. The Hedgehog 2. <sighs> oh boy. This is gonna be interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because as far as I'm aware, I've not completed that game for the maturity of my life. Because even then, I will discuss more details as soon as I jump into that playthrough alone. So even then, though, I might as well prepare for it, though. So, um,. Yeah, I hope you guys do make looking forward to this playthrough as well, so even then, uh, that, let's just go say that much right now, so, um, yeah, this is it for the continuation of Sonic's Game Gear Marathon, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here, and I'm from the Maxi Toys, and today ladies and gentlemen, we'll present to you the next Game Gear Sonic game playthrough, and that was the form of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now this game did came around around the same year as when the Mega Drive version came around, but the difference is this time around though, is the fact that this game is essentially a prequel to the Mega Drive version. You ever know why? It's because the plot in this game this time around though, is I believe, Tails, Miles, Tails, Plowers, being kidnapped by Dr. Robotnik, so it's up to Sonic to actually rescue him. See, even then though, that's how the story usually ends up with. See, even then though, the story itself is very different for the Mega Drive version, so... So yeah, here it is, folks. Welcome to our Let's Play of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. As I established earlier, it only came out on the Sega Game Gear, and also at the same time, that usually also came out on the Sega Master System as well. But the biggest difference is though, however though, is the fact that the European version only got the, uh, the Master System version alongside with the Game Gear version. See, even then though, another major difference between the, um, similar to how it does in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, the noticeable difference between these two versions is obviously the screen, screen resolution. Like the Game Gear version shrinks uh, the screen down, and the Master System version you can see everything in the horizon. See, even then though, they can perfectly guarantee that the version I'll be going to be talking through is obviously the Game Gear version, aka the hardest version of Sonic 2 8-bit. Now I say that is because we'll discuss details as soon as we actually proceed to this game, so... <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something stuck in my throat, I do apologize. So, to start things off though, we actually start things off with the most unique zone introduced in this particular game alone. Now it's the form of not so much for a fresh green hill zone, instead we got ourselves the different zone environment, which is actually forms of the underground zone. Basically it's more likely a combination of the ground and rock type of environment, and also lava pits here and there as well. See, so Menendo, that's, um, as I established earlier, that this game did manage to came out before the Mega Drive version, see, so Menendo, that this is more likely, technically, a prequel to Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive, see, so Menendo, because, you know, we have to rescue Tails and just to see the end of the game, see, so Menendo, yeah, that's all you should expect it. 
And of course, much like her does in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, there are only three acts per zone. See, so even then, that two acts are consist of platforming levels, and the third act is, uh, third act are considerably the boss levels. See, so even then, though. Um, however, though, I will admit, though, is that the boss battles themselves in this game are a lot more tougher this time around than in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Because unlike in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, there was pretty simple and pretty easy stuff. However, though, I will say, though, is that this version, in this case, the Game Gear version of Sonic 2, is a lot more harder compared to the Master System version, and even the Mega Drive version as a result as well. Because for one thing, is that I established that earlier, is that the Master System version can actually increase the size of the screen, which you can see the horizon. However, though, the Game Gear version, that you have to deal with a lot of uh, guessing words, see if Nintendo was coming up up ahead. So I like this. And of course, much like how it does in Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Game Gear and Master System, Chaos Emeralds makes a return, and much like how it does it for last time, you have to find them in every single level. Well, not any levels, mind you, but only in some of these zones, most notably in Act 2 this time around, because even then, though, that in Act 1, it doesn't contain anything, so even then, though, Act 2 is good to go here, in, in case if you want to find those all these Chaos Emeralds. Of course, I'll be getting all six of these Chaos Emeralds, and I say six Chaos Emeralds because much like how it does in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, there are only six Emeralds in the game. Well, five if you want to actually find them, and, and the last one you have to find is actually not that hard to get, but even though we will discuss more details on soon to that. So here we go folks, on to the third act of Underground Zone. Now, this is by far the hardest level in the entire game, in this case the first um, ever hardest level in any 2D Game Gear Sonic game ever. <laughs> because the reason why I say that is because, uh, the boss battle in this particular zone is the fact that Eggman or oh, Dr. Robotic is gonna carry me here. I thought he was gonna let me get killed by the lava, but it turns out it isn't. Because, um, we ended up in this slopey hill, and all you have to do is base, uh, it's pretty simple, but sometimes it feels really luck-based in the Game Gear version, because I don't have any issues on the Master System version, because, um, in the Game Gear version of this boss battle right there, so you need to actually dodge a lot of black balls until you actually let the black balls decide to hit this little claw contraption. And if you do this, like, six times, then Dr. Robotic will directly try to charge right at you, and you have to jump at the right time so you don't get hit. Because, um, yes, much like how it does in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, there are no rings if you're actually in the Act 3 level. So even then, though, no, it's all about the test of luck on that particular boss. But believe me, a lot of people always died on this boss battle for very first-time players. Which I highly agree, because that boss is probably the hardest boss in the entire game. At least in the Game Gear version, that is. Whilst in the Master System version, I can perfectly see what's up ahead, most notably in the left side of the screen. But even then, that's all I can really say about this here, so... Ah, oh, shoot, there goes my first death of the playthrough. Oh, Jesus Christ. It always does that in every single playthrough at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, now we move on to the second new zone, introduced in the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 8-bit version, and that was the form of Sky High Zone. Now, this level's very really interesting, and it's also quite infamous as well, because we'll get to the gimmick until we actually get towards the end of Act 1. But even then, though, that, um, it's more likely a mishmash, it kind of reminds me of, like, Hilltop Zone from Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive, except it takes place in the skies, rather than just mountains. So, um, yeah, believe me, the first boss, the first boss in this game is actually is the hardest part about this game, and even then, though, you were expecting you'll actually lose a lot of lives in that particular run-through. Although, luckily, though, if you ever purchase on the Sonic Gems Collection version, you do have a safe state, and that's why uh, this is a version I was going to be using on. See, so even then, that, um, do not expect that I was going to be using a lot of safe states in this game, because, believe me, this game is by far the hardest Game Gear Sonic game I've ever played, at least for the Game Gear departments for Sonic. So, yeah, because, you know, uh, much like it does in Sonic 1, that, um, this game doesn't have a spin dash until the Mega Drive version of Sonic 2, and also you don't- you can't play as Tails in this version, unlike the Mega Drive version you can do. So yeah, this is the infamous part about this level, especially when we get to the next act, is the Hang Glider. Now, you probably guys are thinking that um, the hang glider was actually uh, a lot of garbage to control, but it turns out I found it pretty easy. Oh yeah, by the way, there are some, um, um, notable, um, signs if you actually manage to reach the goal signpost. Um, depends on what price you can get. Um, Robotic, once again, that gives you nothing. 
And as you can see, I've got myself a rings icon, means I got 10 additional rings. And there's also some two rare ones. I'm not kidding. There are two rare ones you can get. If you get a Sonic's face, you get yourself an extra life. If you get a Tails icon, you get yourself an extra continue. So even then, uh, that, uh, of all the other rewards you can get in this game, uh, those two stuff is by far the rarest thing you can get. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. So, um... Anyways, now we move on to Sky High Zone Act 2, and the Chaos Emerald location is probably is the most annoying part of this level. It's the fact that you have to deal with a Leaps of Faith um, um, situation, obviously, because um, as you can see, we're actually going to be uh, walking around in the clouds all over the place. But the ones you need to bounce onto is the one with the singular cloud, which you might be thinking it might be act out quite differently, but it, turned out, but it turns out it's actually identical, so even though you can't really tell that uh which cloud you want to bounce on see if and uh, that uh because you know it's, it feels identical to between each other so even then uh they have to guess yeah as you can see there's a chaos symbol right there and yeah rather than just actually put off the exact same color as from before this time they are different colors see, even then uh, the underground zone is actually a blue chaos emerald and the sky high zone's emerald is actually the yellow chaos emerald so yeah i'm kind of glad they actually did manage to make themselves a lot more detailed this time around so even then uh, that yeah and of course, the um, the model of Sonic right there, the Sonic sprite over there, that's actually heavily borrowed from the Master System version as well, and also the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Master System as well. Although the noticeable difference was though, is the different uh, waiting animations, so even then uh, that, yeah, that's the only major difference between uh, these few versions of the Geese games. Now we move on to Act 3 of Sky High Zone. Oh yeah, by the way, jump over there because that's a bottomless pit. So even then, you have to watch out for those platforms over there. As well as the occasional enemy that just try to, uh, loves to actually just try to disrupt you at one point. So here we go folks, on to the next boss battle. Well, not so much for the boss battle just yet, because first things first, we need to take care of these little micro um, bird robots. And if you do clear those guys out, then you pretty much move on to the second half, in this case, the um, the final part of this battle, is the fact that I highly suggest you get rid of these eggs first before you actually deal with the real face. See if then uh, once you deal with that, then the real face begins. The uh, robotic metal uh, mother bird. Yeah, I say mother bird because they usually be text those little robot uh, micro birdie robots he's pathetically easy that uh, unlike it does in the first boss that I found the first boss it was simply it's really tough but even under uh, that as far as this uh, this particular boss is concerned it's actually pretty easy so um, yeah seems like this little capsule department looks very different this time uh, you can only just activate it once you jump onto um, underneath it's the you know the capsule thing so even under uh, you can actually free the animals much like it does in the first game now we move on to the third unique um, zone that's actually introduced in this game is actually forms off the aquatic lake. One thing I actually really loved about this level is the fact that, uh, oh, there's actually our first loop in the game. Yes, they are going to be bringing up some loops in this game every once in a while. See, even then, it has been a while since we actually saw these loop to loops ever since, um, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Mega Drive. See, even then, uh, that, yeah. Yeah, what makes it so cool about this level though right here is that if every time you're trying to perform a, uh, the spin roll, you can actually do a little bit of a skimming. Yeah, it reminds me like a skimming, like I was in a beach vacation when I was trying to skim these rocks. See, even though that's pretty cool. Uh, the annoying part about this level though, however, though, as you can see, I, I, I constantly get knocked back all the time. It's the fact that I hate the fact that when you get hurt when you're in underwater, sometimes the gravity itself is a little bit too weird at points. Even especially noticeable that you will get pushed back, like, significantly. Like, you'll see why in just a moment until we get into Act 2 in variation, which, speaking of such though, there's gonna be enough of Chaos Emerald on that act. See if it end up yet, yeah. The first side was pretty short though, I'm not kidding. Even though the uh, the, uh, the goal signpost was actually well hidden, so you have to go underneath the levels instead of like going to the top. So um, here we go, on to Act 2, where we're going to be spending most of our time underwater here. This level does remind me of almost related to the Lapwave Zone from Sonic 1, except the fact that it calls it a different name, it's actually forms of Aquatic Lake. By the way, there aren't any zones returning from Sonic 2 from the Mega Drive, because obviously this game did came out first before the Mega Drive version, which I understand that, because, it, you know, they're trying to make the, um, some unique zones to it, so even then, uh, that's, um, yeah. In fact, every single aspect of this game is actually a lot more different than the Mega Drive counterpart, because, um, you know, I believe, unlike the Mega Drive version, that it does contain some special stages, and it's somehow so to Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Mega Drive Game Gear Master System. 
Uh, they do have special stages in that game. This game doesn't have special stages, surprisingly, because even then, though, that once you get 50 rings, and if you hit to the end of gold signpost, then nothing happens. Even then, though, that's all those does. So even then, though, there, there are only, like, about three, uh, no, four rewards, or three, if you might as well count for. So, um... The annoying part about this level, though, as well, though, is the fact that sometimes in Act 2, that, um, the most annoying part about this is that, taking a note from Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, that the game does most likely during the RPG elements and all that stuff, sometimes they contain some really annoying invisible pitfalls, which can be really annoying at times. Oh, I'm almost drowning. Come on, grab the bubble. Oh, so close to get that damn bubble. Oh, come on. A reference to Sonic Shorts Volume 8, by the way. I'll be right back. Oh, I'm back again. Sorry about that, folks. It's just I have to go through all that um, slow-paced section again. And I've spent about, like, a minute and 36 seconds. Because you rather know why? Because I kept on getting certain mistakes. There we go. So, yeah, what's unique about this uh, particular axe, though, by the way, is the fact that once you get into this particular bubble, although not only are you actually going to have to keep your bubbles to survive when you're underwater, much like it does in the original Sonic 1, is the fact that occasional sun bubbles will actually guide you to the levels. Even then, though, take this bubble, for example, if you think you might actually try to get your air back, but no, you're actually going to be going trapped inside the bubble, which is, I think, is kind of cool. Which even, I know, it does remind me of, like, a new Super Mario Bros. Wii type of syndrome, or even new Super Mario Bros. U, and even Mario Party Island Tour, and even Mario Party Star Rush as a result of that department right there, which I think is kind of interesting. So, um, yeah. Oh, the lag. Yeah, much like it does in the first game, there's gonna be a lot of times that um, the frame rate starts to chug every once in a while, even especially noticeable this was on the power 50 hertz mode or something like that. Which even end up, because again, I'm using on the Sonic Gems collection version, because, you know, the only way I can manage to capture some of the footage on the, uh, you know, the game itself. Which even end up, this, this game will also appear in Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, which even end up, I'm pretty sure in order to actually unlock it, you have to collect, like, I would say 120 emblems, so, you know. Alright, well, hold left here, because Chaos Emerald, because even end up, once you come to this sequence here, and you hold down the left button as soon as you actually get to this section here. You hold down the left button and you should be able to get yourselves a Chaos Emerald. So, that was three so far, so only three more to go. So even then though, we're pretty much in the halfway point of the game already. Well, when it comes to the check, uh, the, no, not checkpoints, um, the Chaos Emerald system. So, um, even though, speaking of the checkpoint, this. You know, speaking of checkpoints, sorry for a little bit of a tongue twisting, I really do apologize. There aren't any checkpoints in this game this time around, which is mainly bizarre. I think that's probably because of the nature of how the fact that this game is really, really damn difficult compared to the Mega Drive counterparts, even especially noticeable in Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Game Gear. Because back in Sonic 1, they can actually find some occasional checkpoints, which can actually save your life at one point. But this game, not so much this time. So even then, you have to figure out, you have to do the entire level with only one run, rather than just actually get yourself a checkpoint to begin with. So, that's why many people seem to actually criticize to think that this game is really, really damn difficult this time around compared to the, uh, the first game and the second game on the Mega Drive. Because, um, you know, Sonic Con Spin Dash, which much like it does in Sonic 1 on the Game Gear, and especially in the Mega Drive version, but even then, uh, you have to actually cooperate with trying to deal with it, so... In this final part right there, we need to actually guide the bubble all the way towards the end. But even then, uh, the only thing is, though, is that you need to be very, very cautious with spikes. Uh, I would say scorpion enemies. And even though, once you avoid all this kinds of stuff, if you reach to the top, then out of the levels right here. Jeez, I only spent about 4 minutes and 34 seconds. That took way too long on that level, I gotta say this much. But hopefully it doesn't get too much anything worse, though. Let's go say that much right now. Anyways, now we move on to Act 3 of Aquatic Lake, where we're gonna have to deal with the next boss. Even then, though, no. uh, rather than actually dealing with the um, Eggman's contraptions this time around, unlike how it does in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, instead we have to fight Eggman's robots instead, or Dr. Robotnik's robots. So even then, no, as you saw earlier, that I managed to beat the, um, the claw machine and stuff like that, as well as the um, this metallical bird head. And the third boss, as you can see, we're actually fighting ourselves a seal. 
which his weak spot is actually forms of his nose, which every time he blimps the, um, this, uh, blue nose, that's his weak spot. So every time when you actually decide to hit him, as you can see, when it extends in, then you should be able to attack him. And then eventually, that time, um, he will catch you off guard at points because he will do some little seal tricks and what have you. I'm assuming he's more likely performing some circuses tricks, all that recent stuff. But even then, no, that's, he's more likely made out of robot and all that stuff. So, he's pretty easy for the most part. There's sometimes you have to be very careful with the movements. You especially notice about that, um... Um, if you, if you let the, uh, the, um, nose will blend in or anything like that, he will start to create a projectile, so you have to watch out. And that's it, folks. That's it for Aquatic Lake Zone. So, join us next time on Let's Play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the sake of Game Gear. It's the fact that we move it on into the fourth zone, known as Green Hill Zone. So, see you guys then. Later, fellas.